Welcome back to our second hour of 8 Bits. I'm BJ. We joined by It's Me, JP, for your two hour show every week about video games. Well, we try every week that we, we, we try. We've been we pretty try. good about it, though. Yeah, we have. Hey, we hit double digits. That's always an accomplishment on any show. I don't care if you are <laughs> like doing a show about bacon muffins or a show about how to properly pick up dog poop in public. Uh, you reach 10 episodes, and that's a milestone. So here it is, 11. We've done it, JP. Exactly. We, we, we're going places. Oh, my God. And hopefully we're entertaining you guys along the way. We really appreciate uh, you guys tuning in and uh, supporting the content. So we just talked about Battlefield 4, what we've been playing. A few news items this week, and then I think we'll just go ahead and open up the phones uh, to anyone that wants to discuss uh, anything coming out or uh, you know anything in the world of gaming. We're always uh, we're always ear all ears, and we love to hear you guys' opinions on different stuff happening. It is the beginning of October, and so you know I thought it might be interesting to just kind of list all the games that are coming out this month, and I. I realize that, JP, even though I'm not that interested in as many games on this list, there are more games coming out this month than I, I kind of, I guess, maybe yeah. fell off my radar or I forgot about it. I was I not know. interested in, like, any of the games. But then now I'm, like, seeing some, some videos of them and some different screenshots, and I'm like, you know, maybe I will play my first Pokemon game this month. Oh <laughs> like, yeah. And, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I will play my first... Lego game this month. Yeah, and Lego Marvel Super Heroes is one of the games you know, coming out. Batman's put out some pretty good games this past couple of years. Maybe I'll play some Arkham Origins. <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, Lego yeah. Lego Marvel Super Heroes, uh, Disgaea D2, which if, you, if you're a Disgaea fan, you are probably really excited for this game because it's a true sequel uh, with characters that are sort of like the, the iconic characters of uh, of Disgaea. Batman Arkham Origins, just as you said. Battlefield 4 hitting. Assassin's Creed 4. Pokemon XY. Zelda Wind Waker HD, which I'm going to encourage everyone who's never played it to pick up if they can. And Beyond Two Souls. And that doesn't even cover... There's still a few games out there that are coming out, right? But that's a decent AAA title list. Yeah. Are you excited at all for Assassin's Creed? I feel like there is no hype for this game. Like Ubisoft is trying its hardest. It's they're pushing so much for this. And I haven't even seen like Watchdog promotion yet, but I've seen a ton of AC4 promotion, but it's like I the way that Assassin's Creed 3 ended, I'm just not excited. What is that? See that? It's a it's a it just happens to be a bottle of ibuprofen. Yeah. I will consume this entire bottle before I play Assassin's Creed 4. Yeah. I'm just I they lost me, man. Did you, you played AC3, right? No. I okay. stopped I, after I got the like, second one after 2. I got like 6 or 7 hours into AC3 and I was just not interested anymore. They just game was fucking gorgeous. Like probably yeah. one of the best looking games I've played on PC. And I like time. pirates and shit too, but I just you know, maybe I don't know, JP. Maybe I'm gonna take it back. I'm gonna take back the pills. Maybe this game comes out and people are like, "Holy shit, it's amazing!" Yeah, maybe it's awesome. And then, uh, I, and then I have to, but I feel like you know, someone mentioned this. Where did I hear this? Uh, someone's having a discussion. It's like, does anyone else feel like Ubisoft is just releasing the same fucking games over and over? Like they they have yeah. they have literally become yeah. like the Call of Duty of their own games. Uh, yeah, you know, the like, Rayman and the Assassin's Creed, right? Creed and even releases. think about like what are the the driving game and just you know, and I'm like, uh, yeah, just yeah. dance. Like I, I, yeah, it's every single well, one of their games sort of has that. To be fair, that is kind of like the industry today. Is like if it sell, I mean, Grand Theft Auto Five just came out for fuck's maybe sake. that like, is all... why I've been playing so much more independent shit. Oh yeah, and no, free to play I think that's shit why and towards the end of this generation, like ind independent or indie games have just picked up because they're all new IPs and they're new takes on video games instead of like Grand Theft Auto Five, Diablo Three, Starcraft Two. Like name a name a triple A game that is not a sequel or a the third one or the fourth one or the fifth one of the title that's been big this generation. Last of Us. 
one could argue that that's just a different take that's taking Uncharted to no a, way. another world. No way. Come on. <laughs> you're, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> I mean, it's true. You're, you're right. But, like, I, I just get that feeling of dread when I play Assassin's Creed game, like... Yeah, it's I remember. I don't want to go back to what I and did. And it's funny in too because when that game first came out, right? It ever we all knew it was limited in scope because of the hardware, and now like the hardware can actually support what I think the dream of Assassin's Creed is to build this giant, giant city where you can do whatever you want and crawl and climb and assassinate whoever you want, and we're just not that interested anymore. Yeah, so. I don't. I I'm trying to think, you know, what could Assassin's Creed do to bring me back? Maybe it's next generation, where they can fulfill. Yeah, maybe. I mean, like that's the other thing too. With the launch games coming out, I'm not really ex- super stoked for like any in particular launch game. Maybe Watch Dogs. Well, probably Watch Dogs. I think I'm I'm generally excited for. I am for Killzone just to see what a next gen first yeah first out title and will do. Kind of in that same line of thinking, like uh, Forza. Just because Forza games look, they're always pushing the 360 to kind of the the limit that at that moment in time the the system can be pushed. So I want to see what that looks like. Yeah, I've watched yeah. a bunch of. Uh, um, uh, God, what is that website? There's a website that, that like publishes super high uh, bitrate HD footage, and they did that for uh, Forza, uh, like Gamers Night or something like that. It's a European website. Anyways, looks they, they published something from Forza. Yeah, it looks incredible. It looks really, really good. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not excited at all for AC4. What else is coming out this week? We've got, or this month. Um, I am excited for Lego Marvel Super Heroes, guys. If you've never played a Lego game, I got to tell you, like, they, they just do amazing, magical things with the characters that you already love. And because it's Lego and it has this, like, it has this cutesy, but they manage to do this, like, Pixar thing where they keep this level of, uh, of adult in, in maturity to it that you will appreciate it. But this thing has, like, fucking everyone and they all have unique powers i saw it at e3 it blew my mind that one is going to be in our household just like easy peasy um voiced yet do they have voiceovers for that so it's still like the weird hum no hum no hum no no (laughs) no all of the all of the marvel games have actually and the uh batman some of the dc stuff has had uh voice Uh, so apparently it will continue to do so okay um uh, now, let, yeah. what about Batman? Are you are you excited for another Batman game? Yeah, man, I am. But I got to tell you, JP, I don't want Batman to fall into the same trap. Like, I'm the original driving. one was great. Second was one was, was equally fantastic. I love the fact that this one is sort of approaching it from a prequel perspective. Yeah. Um, you know, so, honestly, like, the stories have been good enough to... Yeah, the um, twist in Arkham City were definitely pretty cool. Right. The end of it. I enjoyed that. So, yeah, I am. Am I as excited as I was for the second one? I can't say that I am. Yeah, the second one had so much hype around it because the first one was just so good. The first one, like, I, th- I think really broke a lot of... I, I don't want to be too hyperbolic about that <laughs> bullshit <laughs> or, or too much hyperbole in that, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I feel like the big draw, at least for me, to the Batman games is seeing what characters are in a Batman game in that particular one, mm. and they've kind of like run their course. Like now they're kind of like to these tertiary characters in the Batman world with with the uh, with the ones in the newest one where they're like all these assassins. Uh, what's the uh, what's the big bad guy in this one? Apparent. I mean, I'm sure Joker is somewhere, but. The the red the black mask is that who it is I think I'm sure someone in chat could tell me um, but yeah I I don't know I guess we'll see it sounds cool yeah I I think it'll do well I think I'll play it um, for sure so uh, Wind Waker I'm not gonna play it I played through it I'm enough time you're not no fuck the Wii U 
<laughs> I'm over it, Weed. It's been in my... Well, maybe I'll bring it out because I have desk space and my PlayStation 3 is just a giant brick. But oh. uh, I will probably not play the new Wind Waker. Okay. I have heard... That there was actually uh, some... I think... Nintendo was doing some preview test. Uh, I think I read it from Polygon. Uh, or no, it was uh, Stephen Tiller from Kotaku. They were talking about uh, Super Mario 3D Land or whatever, the new Wii U title, uh, the new Super Mario title for Wii U. And I don't know if he's if he was just like getting nostalgia about Mario, but he said it was like fantastic, and it looked incredible. And I was like, oh, here, <sighs> God damn it! You know, God if we it. could, if we could co-op a Mario game. Over the interwebs, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, it's called Raymond, kind of. But well, <laughs> I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Bitch, you don't eat mushrooms, and Rayman. I'm sure the people that designed and made the art for that game definitely had some <laughs> mushrooms, man. I bet they did. That game's kind of crazy. I bet they did. All so right. maybe Mario. I I'm just so disappointed in the Wii U. They are kind of starting to trickle out those like console exclusives to make it a little bit beefier of a system, though. Like Pikmin, I think a lot had a lot of people interested in. Yeah, the... I just am afraid it's gonna get it's gonna get forgotten in the next generation, but we'll see. Yeah, that Wii Fit U Plus, I don't know, maybe that'll <laughs> save it or something. Uh, I didn't. I haven't seen that. No, I don't know. Fuck it. All right, Who so knows? let's uh let's do the God damn it I'm feeling old segment where we announce that Mist is 20 years old and I remember Ooh. I re I mean think about this 1993 you guys. It doesn't actually seem that long ago. Uh but 20 years ago this game came out and this was like this is fucking crazy because this game like Amped sales of CD-ROM drives for PCs. <laughs> and guys, a CD-ROM drive would cost you like $300 to $600. Yeah. Bonkers, man. Yep. I never played... Well, I think I played it, but I never actually was old enough to understand what I was playing. Uh, when it comes to the Mist game. Sure. Uh, I really feel like The Witness is kind of like a new take on Mist. Jonathan Blow's new game. I, mean, I haven't seen any of the puzzles or anything, but when I look at like that that game and the the feel of it, that's really what I pull from. Is like this looks like Mist, so it looks pretty cool. Uh, but Mist is twenty years old today, man, or this week rather. When yeah, when was the actual day? Like Wednesday or know. something? I don't know. It's so it long ago. People have forgotten. <laughs> But it's yeah. just uh, for those of you that don't know, it was like a, a it was an adventure game that was fully rendered, but obviously pre-rendered. It came on yeah. a CD-ROM and it had some video. It was a technological uh, advancement for gaming in in terms of like what people were able to do with graphics that weren't necessarily interactive. But when you suddenly had the size of a CD-ROM to play with, this is what you could do. So it was a big fucking deal. Like this is a it, it, it leaves a historical mark in gaming because yeah, it was yeah, before sure. this we were limited to carts and, uh, you know, very, very small amounts of data. Even in the early days of PC gaming, you know, getting a game on four discs was considered a lot. Uh, yeah. When you put shit on CD-ROM, suddenly it was like, the world is, it's huge. Look what Wasn't I it also do. big in terms of like, it was the first game to really feature like puzzles in it and, and interactive yeah. puzzle design and stuff like that. Yeah. So. yeah. One of the highest selling PC games of all time. So in the chat says, so that's uh, pretty crazy. Really? Yeah. I wonder if, does that still stand true today? Uh, Sky the 1908? Uh, I, Wait, I that's think that's, so. That's like a think about... webcam bot type, or name. We... <laughs> Sky the 1908, they always have the, the years they were born at the end, man. It's a grandma webcam box. Maybe they're from the past. Maybe from so. The time that's machine, like, from that's the like generation one of the, the bots. Yep. So. Gen one. Gen one. Yep. Uh, Path of Exiles out of beta. I didn't know it was Woo! in beta. I, uh, yeah, I'm like... <laughs> 
Uh, are you, yeah. I heard that like Crip was playing this. He's been playing a lot recently. Again, uh, he's played. I think of any streamer, he plays the most out of that. Uh, I don't know. I I played a little bit. I didn't. I felt like I was playing a game from like. I felt like I was playing Planescape Torment and 1080p. Like that's what I felt like the textures looked like in that game. I was just not interested in the art style or anything. Uh, but apparently it's really, if, if you are a fan of the Diablo games and was upset or were upset with how they handled Diablo 3, like apparently Path of Exile is, is where everyone's gone. Yeah, I played a little bit, but it didn't really, didn't really tickle my fancy too much. I could see how someone who really was looking for that true experience would be all over it. But I did find it enjoyable. I just didn't feel like it was something that I was going to really get into. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it the the skill thing, skill uh, orb. I don't know what they call yeah, it. Yeah, the game, skill gems. Skill gems or no, 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 no. Like I'm talking about the the way that you advance your character. Whatever that's oh, called. Oh, it looks like the Final Fantasy system. Final Fantasy X system. It's just the passive giant, tree. I think is what this it's giant grid. Yeah, yeah. Of it, like a billion Final things. Final Fantasy X. Yeah. yeah. People are. I think the skill web is maybe what they're it's officially the calling skill, it. It's crazy. The passive skill tree. It's it is nuts. It is nuts. It like, is. I got it up gigantic. right now. It's crazy. It is huge. Look at that. I'll just see. That's as far as I can zoom out. But that shit's bonkers. Yeah. Oh, Pretty nuts. Fuck. Pretty, yeah, you're still scrolling, man. It's nuts, though. Crazy. Out of beta. Yep. Check well, soon. Soon. Oh, uh, is it soon? The, oh, the I'll countdown. Look. Yeah, it's this week, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we open up the phone lines, what else? Uh, uh, oh, I found this site today. I didn't know it existed, but it's called Not on Steam. Which is and, pretty ironic. What, why? Go on. Go, I'll, I'll t say why it's ironic. Okay, so not on Steam. Uh, they just have sales of all these games. And I was going through it because I, I, I like these a lot of these games, like this type of stuff. It, it's interesting uh, to see what people are working on. And, and uh, obviously you can come here and they have sales on all this stuff. Some of them have links directly to the, green, uh, the Steam green light. So you can get it support on there. Uh, but I found a couple games on here that I was definitely interested in, JP. But I'm curious to hear what you are about to drop on me. <laughs> it's ironic because uh, when I was on uh, the Co-Optional podcast earlier this week, um, we were talking about like the Steam OS and all that stuff, and Total Biscuit brought up the point of like how there are games that are not on Steam. And my immediate response, which was kind of, I guess, dumb to say was name a game that's not on Steam that's worth playing. And then, like, I load up r slash games 20 minutes after the show, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah. like, like, these are probably all a bunch of games that are good that aren't on Steam that are probably worth playing. Um, and, yeah, it's a huge sale going on right now. I think four more days on that. Yeah, four uh, more days. Four days, 20 hours. Um, so if you're looking and you're a little bit bored and... Uh, you want to play some some indie games or see what's out there? It's definitely a cool site to check out for all these different sales. This Dungeon of Elements I'm gonna play this weekend too. It's like a it's like a RPG meets Doctor Mario. I gotta look Click. at Disco Dodgeball, dude. Whoa! It's freaking me out there. Okay, let's. let's... Oh, that music sounds good. Oh man, oh this looks pretty. Skate park jump. Okay, well, we're probably not going to be playing Disco Dodgeball. Dungeons of <laughs> Elements, so I'm going to give that one a shot. Anyway, uh, not on Steam. Easy to remember. Dot uh, com. Dot com. Dot com. Uh, last but not least, Bioshock Infinite. I'm very excited for this. Burial at, at sea. Uh, all right, let me. Can I crush your excitement? We and I love doing this. Yeah. I put it in there. I don't know if you saw this, but I'm, yeah, I'm sure I, you saw this. I see the bolded thing right in front of me. IGN uh, has like a, a hands-on preview with it. And a direct quote from uh, some dev, it, it uh, 
developer house that I can't think of right now, says we rebalanced everything to be more towards resource management and still. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the hell that means, JP. And still. Fuck off. <laughs> Uh, I, I read through a little thing. They're saying that the first half of the game is there's actually no combat. You're kind of just walking around the world. Which and, I'm okay with because which I, yeah, it sounds rad to Rapture me, yeah. was, it's still in my, like, in terms of environments, places where games have taken place, Rapture is one of the most incredible story elements like landmarks that's ever been put into a game. I mean, it definitely hits top 10 list, no doubt. So yeah. being able to explore what you saw before, <laughs> like I feel like as a big Bioshock fan, I hope that there will be places that I recognize, but I only saw after all the shit went down. So right. I'm also hoping that in that there will be, uh, there will be, potentially scenarios and things that happen in the game that will unravel what I saw in Bioshock one. So I'll put up with some, I'll put up with some stealth just like I did in, in, in Grand Theft Auto, but okay. I will be a bit surprised if it, I mean, Bioshock is so much about the, the combat, like in a lot of aspects. So, yeah, I, I don't know. They, <laughs> I, I fucking hate DLC week. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Like, right. I, lo I love those games, and I want the end to be the end, right? Like, I understand that this has no impact on the actual game as far as we know. There's probably going to be, like, some little Easter egg-ish stuff that kind of relates to the other stuff, but um, I don't know. I guess I'm excited for it. It looks pretty cool because you see a lot of the, like, creatures that you fought in the first Bioshock, and they're right. just like normal townspeople. Like a big daddy is out drilling into something uh, to like expand the city and stuff like that. But yeah, I you know honestly, JP, <sighs> I wouldn't give two shits about this game or about this DLC if the if the damn universe and the story that they wrap so isn't just so damn yeah. good. I just, I honestly, I think about all the DLC packs I've never played for exactly the reasons that you, you spoke about. And I'm sure all the ones I will not play in the future. Uh, this one, this one has me, has me on day one for sure. I think that the, and I might've said this last or before, but, the only like DLC that I've purchased this generation was, at least that I can think of, was Tiny Tina's yeah. uh, DLC for Borderlands 2, which was incredible, like amazingly well done uh, by the guys at 2Ks, and, uh, or I guess that's the publisher. Whoever made, I can't remember any dev houses today, uh, Randy Pitchford and Gearbox, that's who I'm trying to talk about, but... Um, I don't know any other DLC that I've purchased. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't had much, much either. So I'm all over this one, though. Have they said when that's coming out? By the way, <clears throat> is that coming out pre or post uh, next gen? I honestly don't know, but if people are getting reviews of it, I have to imagine it's pretty soon, JP. Well, I don't. They were getting. Yeah, they were getting first looks at it. I don't think it was full on review. Oh, okay. No, I don't. Okay. I think they had to go to a. Hands place. on. I see. Yeah, I see. yeah, yeah. They didn't get review code or anything, so. Okay. Um, oh, no, that's right. I did play the Dark Souls DLC, but it came with the PC thing, ver uh, like. Oh, is it something already. you, like, bought? Yeah, like, when you buy the PC version of the game, it already comes with uh, the DLC for, for Dark right. Souls. Which was incredible, by the way. If you haven't played that, go play that. That was very well done by From Software. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and yeah. open up the phone lines, if you're cool with that. Cool. Got about a half hour. Uh, yeah. Until we got to wrap the show. So you can reach us via telephone, 909-581-8509, or give DJ Weed a ring on Skype, and uh, we'll uh, we'll take your call. Uh, and, it, and pretty much anything uh, video game related, anything that we have uh, talked about here on the on the program. You know, we mentioned it earlier, and we don't normally talk about eSports uh, on the show, but Worlds is tonight. And uh, it is uh, in a location that is undoubtedly the biggest, one of the biggest, well, for North America anyway, venues that's ever been used for an esports event, the Staples Center. Yeah. Uh, 
We got another call here. We'll, we'll we'll pick that back up in just a second. Let's take. Uh, we've got uh, we've got area code five one two on the line. Hello, welcome to Eight Bits. What's up? No, oh, they're still listening to the stream. All right, listen to me on the phone. <laughs> listen. And then he hung up. All right, cool. That's okay because we got uh, Justoon on the line. Hello, welcome to Eight Bits. What's up? Hey, DJ Wait. Uh, good day from Australia. <laughs> good day. Um, cool. We've got a question for JP. Sure. Uh, I saw your uh, coverage, or you sort of played up your monitor installation over the course of uh, your, your monitor expansion. Uh, sure. How's that going for you? And how do you think that's uh, has it made gaming better for you, or more fun, or more uh, monitors equals better? Or? <laughs> I didn't really do it for, for gaming. I still use a single monitor when it comes to gaming, um, which is kind of dumb for a lot of people to to think about because I have five of them and I've got this giant TV. Uh, <coughs> but in terms of like a workflow and everything, I, I really enjoy it. Um, you are on I 120 mul- hertz though, right? I've got two monitors, 120 hertz, yeah. yeah. And, and were you gaming on those before? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, okay, I, I you already on, were. Okay. Well, Console gaming, I'm gaming on a, an Asus with a super low... I don't know why I game on this. The regular consoles don't spit out 120 hertz anyway, so... Um, but yeah, I I, I kind of want to go up to 6, which is really stupid, because I, I shouldn't go up to 6, but now that I have this extra video card, I've got more... I was telling this to Wheaton, I can't believe I'm saying this on air. Uh, <laughs> but it would give me more, um, like, landscape to... Uh, stream with on the streaming PC if I throw up a third monitor. Um, but now I've got this giant 50-inch TV in front of me, and I haven't really figured out how to work that into everything. Um, may- maybe I've, I've thought about gaming on, like, tri-monitor setup and because I, I have the hardware to, to actually support oh, it now. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I don't know how you stream that. And so, like, as, as someone who streams for a living and, and does content for a living, I don't know if I'll actually do that. Very cool, man. I really appreciated the uh, the coverage of it. The monitor mounts and stuff look fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, cheers for having me on, guys, and thanks for the show. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Take cool. care. Yeah. Bye. Although I, I would say just off of that, everyone should have a 120 hertz monitor. Like, if you're if you're really yeah. into that sort of thing. Anyone who played on game. CRTs knows how great that is. And so. Yeah. Yeah. Should definitely get on it. You can reach us via telephone nine zero nine five eight one eight five one nine or Skype me DJ Wheat. Let's take our next one. We have got Gary on the line. Hello, Gary. Welcome to Eight Bits. What's up? Hello. I'm not too bad. Thank you. Yourself? Doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Good. Well, I wanted to talk about Battlefield Four this week. Um, first Do it. for JP a little bit, and then for yourself. Sure. Um, one. Anyone listening? By Battlefield 4, it's fantastic. I'm about to slag it off a little <laughs> bit because I'm I, I'm a diehard Battlefield fan, and awesome. I just wanted to, I just wanted to do you talk. Do you do you really like this map that's in in the beta? Ah uh, yes, I've uh, heard a lot of mixed reactions, so I'm curious to hear what we hear from both. I of you. mean, I feel like any map that they put into like a Battlefield beta is going to be the least liked map because you can yeah. only play that map for like 15. And it's going to get slaughtered to shit by everybody. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what happened with the uh, Operation Metro. So there's only so many times you can stand at the bottom of a staircase throwing grenades before you get really pissed off. Some people like that shit, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, but it was just the whole vertical element that I was I was curious about because I I loved the Special Forces expansion for Battlefield Two. I thought that grappling hook was amazing. Oh but it yeah. Was, it was nice. It was limited, and it, it didn't really break anything too much but I, I'm playing this now and I, I mean I used to play really high level well as high level as Battlefield ever got to um, gaming and it's just the fact that every single building can be reached it's just crazy and it's I think crazy it man crazy. It, for me it's really spoiling pub games it's not that I don't like checking and I don't like tactics but it's just I'm finding there's sometimes more people up on roofs than there actually are on the floor. <laughs> so let me, I, I didn't talk about this at all but have you played Domination at all? Do you yes. enjoy that game type more so than the That's large That's just conquest? controlling points, right? Uh, they're both infantry, controlling it's points. It's only infantry as well. Yeah, Domination's only infantry. Oh, yeah. oh, gotcha. It, okay. It's Battlefield Call of Duty-fied. I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's how we used to play Battlefield 
two um when On the game Parkland, was dying yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I love that. I find the engine's good. I mean, it's a bit laggy in the beta and everything like that, but it's uh, it's great that I I think yeah. Okay. And um, there's the the other one. There's a what's the squad versus squad one? I'd like to try that. Oh, is that in the game? I didn't know that was in it's, the game. It's not in the game, no. But squad deathmatch, the one four squads fight on the ground with limited vehicle support and race to top to the leader. No, I don't actually think it's on there. There was one that was announced where it's literally just a, a five on five squad v squad. I didn't know Wait. that. That sounds pretty cool. Mm. Do you know the if there's that... CTF in the game, caller? No. Or in the in the final launch, there's not going to be CTF. No, there was a uh, was it Patrick back was back or can't God pronounce damn it. Damn was it. talking about it. And... That kind of sucks. Apparently, apparently, it hasn't been removed from Battlefield completely, but it won't be with Battlefield 4, so AKA we're going to oh. charge you for it in an expansion. <laughs> Man, I think that's the biggest mistake they made with Battlefield 3, because like the CTF game type was incredible but it was in the, like the last dlc that they put out so no one has access to it yeah and it, it no goes back to it. what you were saying about battlefield moments as well it's just like ctf and battlefield is crazy shit if you oh, it's I think incredible the only, yeah the, the only thing similar to it is tribes in my opinion yeah yeah i've seen that's, some crazy that's the only time where i've seen yeah because you know there's only there's only one game where you can jump in a buggy and fly off a bloody ramp at the craziest thing and then you know you got helicopters everywhere it's mental it's really fun yeah that's the I, craziest I, I imagine thing imagine competitively it would be quite interesting as well oh yeah 100 percent. like I, I played the dlc for battlefield 3 that had uh ctf in it and um the maps were just as big as any other map but the helicopter pilots became like the central thing and how good your pilot was made determined really if you're going to win or not because you could pick the flag up, jump into a helicopter, and then just fly across the map as fast as you can, dodging a billion missiles, and then cap it. And that, like the intensity in that, is only something that could be really had in a CTF yeah. game. And I'm very sad it's not going to be in BF4. Yeah, hopefully it'll be the first expansion this time, though. Not the last one. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, the, the next part of my, my question goes more over to Wheat and... I have to ask you, you know, you're a connected man and everything like that. Is anybody talking about having Battlefield 4 at a competitive level anywhere? Because it seems relatively quiet from every person that I've spoken to about it. Um, I mean, I, I would kind of agree. It's been a little quiet, but as you are, are probably aware, like uh, a lot of other game types are sort of in the limelight right now. And FPS <laughs> is sort of struggling to, to, stay, uh, to stay relevant. But, you know, I, I feel like... I don't know. I mean, like, Battlefield's competitive nature has always kind of wavered a little bit because in order to effectively utilize what makes Battlefield so great, you typically need more than, you know, eight people or more. Yeah, get, getting suddenly, a 32 man clan to a land could be a big yeah, problem. Yeah, that's a big problem, you know, especially yeah. when it's like $2,000 prize or something. It's like, okay, guys, you, you here's all, your you cut. You can all have $10 each. There yep. you go. <laughs> 2731. Here you go. Don't spend it all in one place. So I think that it always has that problem. The thing is, is like Battlefield, I, I read all the time, you guys. Like, hey, I uh, my dad started playing this with me, and now we play three hours every night. And, you know, I just feel like Battlefield is such a huge legacy, and it's never... It was competitive at one point, and it's always had this amazing competitive legacy, but I feel like they kind of accept that that's, that that's a, okay, that they like to have a big, giant audience of people that will play the game and will always be fans of the series and loyal to it. But I just don't know what the yeah. competitive landscape will be like. Probably very good online, like it always is, and it will probably uh, have some trouble breaching into lands. Mm -hmm. It's just what I loved about Battlefield 2 when it launched. There was places do doing like ladder systems and stuff like that, not necessarily for prizes, but if you wanted to play, you know, organized 16 versus 16, or as organized as 16 players can actually get. Not <laughs> yeah. very in my experience. Right, right. <laughs> not very in my experience. <laughs> Right. And, uh, there was places to go for, for that, and then, like you say, over time, Battlefield 2 dwindled down until there was literally just a couple of us playing like 4v4, flag versus flag, medic only, in Karkins, which was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible, it was but awesome. it, it, it doesn't seem to have gone the other way, though, when Battlefield 3 launched. It doesn't seem to have been any attempt to provide that larger landscape, it just kind of like they felt that they had to go smaller, where right. Battlefield right. is big. 
the the one thing that that I guess maybe gives hope is that the spectator UI this time around is really really good. It's fantastic. Um, uh, it, it's actually a completely different client from what I can tell. We that you can load into a server as a spectator and. Really? Uh, it looks super well yeah, done. Actually, yeah, actually, I saw them. They betaed that a little bit. and, and That's what they showed at E3. Like, yeah, that's think. what's interesting. They did it at Gamescom, too. Is that it, they, it's yeah. going to be streamable and probably yeah, if there's I, any commentator I mean, willing to give it a go, you could probably comment on it. As well. You know what? I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't put it past EA, right? Like, they got some money. Maybe yeah. they could do something Battlefield related. Is. Yeah. is yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, yeah. I, I, mean, I know I know of what one one streamer for Battlefield, and he's a complete stoner. <laughs> <laughs> the chances of him organizing an upsurge are, are probably pretty pretty low. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was kind of surprised at how like the numbers for the Battlefield streams were actually pretty low. But I guess when he launched the same week as GTA Online, like that's what you have to expect. But yeah, a lot of people are struggling performance wise as well. I I wanted to stream, but. I've got a decent computer, but I just can't get the FPS to actually play the game. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I, 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 I usually average cool. like... I'm sorry, what was that? I think my CPU will blow up. <laughs> Start yeah, on I've averaged fire. like 1,000 to 1,500 viewers on it, uh, which, I mean, it's not terrible by any means, but it's not like the... I was expecting much bigger numbers from like the bigger streamers. Um, yeah. But I haven't really seen any over 3 or 4K. It, like did, said, it was I cool, think... though. Oh, I think it would be interesting. Oh, I just gonna say, I think it would be interesting if anyone would stream from a spectator point of view. I yeah. think oh, people I, will. I, I, I but the question I, is, is like who you know who will watch that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will. Building that community. Well, well you know, go, someone's gonna you. do it. Someone's <laughs> gonna do it. I think they're gonna. They added the tools, so yeah. How to use them? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, thank you for your call, Gary. Appreciate no, thank it. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, let's take another one, JP. Uh, we've got area code 520. Hello, welcome to 8-Bits. What's up? Hey, we. this is Fix. Hey, who's this? This is Fix. Do you remember me? Fix? From Minnesota, Dank Con. Let's talk about that. Fix? <laughs> yeah, it's Fix. P-H-Y-X. What's up, man? P-H. Well... All right, so anyway, the problem is, so we were talking earlier, JP was mentioning about what is going to be the next particular games that will be really important. And, you know, were there any games that weren't sequels or prequels that were really, you know, anything good or hyped about in the, in the next, that will come up in the next, you know, years, really. But what I think, what do you think about games adding and removing particular components, like an RTS became the MOBA by re removing all of the, you know, the, the individual control of the, of the people um, and, you know, the NPCs and, and controlling a champion versus like at League of Legends or Dota or whatever you want to call it, but MOBAs removing the component of RTS to make it a MOBA or additions of things like you were talking about Assassin's Creed, how there hasn't been a lot of hype lately about Assassin's Creed and how how to make that grab people more? Well, what about additions of things like adding instances where you can get different types of loot or randomized loot that would kind of tie in like the MMO aspect of it, you know, where you're, where you're rewarded, risk versus reward in instances. So, you know, it, I think that the, the transition from like your, your FPS games and RTS games and, and the typical, you know, genres that exist today I think there's going to be a blending or, or even a, a separation of certain elements of that, uh, of those partic particular genres that are going to kind of drive the game industry. And we, we've seen a little bit of, of that. I mean, the, the blending of, of genres. You know, I look at a game like Monday Night Combat, which is like a huge blender of, of probably three or four different game types. Now... It, it has a community, but it didn't catch on. It wasn't like that breakthrough game. But I do feel like we've seen more, uh, more games kind of like it that have attempted to to do something. Like it. But I think there's something to be said there about sort of. Uh, I guess the the games industry in general is kind of a melting pot, and sometimes yeah. a new genre or a new style or type of game will ultimately just come from 
it being a combination of two games. I, I actually, uh, relating this to a mobile game that's super popular right now, Puzzles and Dragons, right? It's like Bejeweled meets Pokemon meets every other freemium game that's ever hit the market. And why is that one super massively successful over the, the other company that just made pretty much the same game? It's partially because they did it first and they did it right. Um, but I, I think that what you say has a lot of legs. I, I think that absolutely be, I mean, the innovation that we've seen lately, uh, I, I don't know that it rivals some of the innovation that we saw early on, you know, in terms of, because of, for exactly the reasons you said, because a lot of times it's like, oh, let's take a and B and mix it together and get a B and it becomes C. Uh, whereas before it was like, you know, parallax scrolling bitches. <gasps> oh my God. You know, our games look so amazing now because we have parallax scrolling that changed the face of gaming, you know, at first person shooters that changed gaming completely. Um, so I don't know, JP, what do you, what do you think? I, I mean, I kind of agree with what you said. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of what could be like what's a genre that could be stripped away and like I you mentioned Assassin's Creed like what if they took the Assassin's Creed world or the idea of Assassin's Creed where it's like this giant world where you can do you can walk around it's open world in that sense but you can climb and do all that stuff assassinations and then they have turn instances in, and stuff they have instances yeah and like turn that into an mmo maybe made it like randomly generated maps or something like that like that could well, definitely look be at cool. dark age of camelot right sure. the dark age of camelot if you're familiar with that was yeah a, very familiar. an mmo right where you have assassin's creed like abilities for <laughs> certain characters so they can climb, they can assassinate, they can stealth, they can, you know, those types of things. So kind of already been in, in that realm of things where sure. there's been that blending between that. I mean, it, then you've got Hitman, right? So Hitman came out after Dark Age of Camelot, and then you have Assassin's Creed that comes out, which is almost exactly like Hitman, except it's in the past instead of in the future, right? Sure. And there's a little bit right. more storyline with, with the revolutionary stuff or, or the Italian tie-ins or Leonardo da Vinci or whatever you want to talk about it. But then now we're kind of like blending forward towards, you know, going back to Dark Age of Camelot again or, or you know, blending it back into an MMO. It, and it's, it's no, I mean, crazy. like, it, it is, it is kind of crazy because uh, even if you take a step back from what you're talking about, we're seeing this all over the place. I mean, the fact that yeah. one of the games I want to play this weekend is that is that Volgar, you know, an eight, a sixteen bit <laughs> style, you know, uh, platformer. It's kind of crazy, right? Like because that innovation has sort of been, I don't want to call it lackluster, but it's just not been as strong. Stagnant I think that it's like stagnant. That, yeah. it, it has allowed people to reuse old styles and genres and types of games to kind of speak to gamers again but i think it's an interesting topic nonetheless and i'm curious i mean i find innovation in gaming to be incredible and i can't wait to see you know who's going to do the next big thing and, and what's going to blow up and have millions of people playing it next so right all right well hey thanks for your call man appreciate it no problem take care dude have a bye all right let's do one more let's do one more yeah. Do you have someone? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, we're going to take Jordan. Jordan, hello. Welcome to 8-Bits. What's up? Yeah, hi. I wanted to talk about Worlds. Uh, sure. What's sure. up? Uh, have you, like the venue, I saw a picture tweeted by one of the people working on it, and it's insane how the venue, they took down the huge scoreboard that goes across, and the screen is a huge LED screen. Like, I don't know if you've seen it or... Uh, no, I, I heard that they just, uh, I heard that they just tweeted a picture of it or Monte Cristo just tweeted a picture of it, but I haven't actually, I haven't actually seen it myself yet. All right. So I wanted, what do you think of this for, uh, like gaming in general? Do you think it's just for esports? sports only works for esports, like helps esports, or do you think it helps 
gaming all around. I think it helps gaming all around because it just creates awareness, <laughs> right? Right? Like, I mean, you know, it sucks when the news in the news we hear uh, guy, you know, guy kills people and, and Grand Theft Auto is to blame or Call of Duty is to blame or this is to blame. You know, like that's most of the news that gaming gets these days. The only other time that gaming gets news is when it's like this game made a shitload of money. Or this this company is losing money, or this company is closed, or this company laid off a thousand people. You know, it, it's so funny that most of the the news is is negativity. So as far as I'm concerned, this is going to bring a positive spin to gaming articles. People are going to see that 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 gaming is serious, whether it's competitive or not. So I think it's good, no matter whether it's it's for competitive gaming or just regular gaming. JP, do you do you agree with that? Yeah. No, I, I think. I'm most excited about the Worlds event tonight just because I want to see what comes from that in terms of media coverage and, and how much the rest of the world pays attention to it. So you don't get on much bigger stage than the Staples Center. And I think that everyone's going to kind of look at that and and just be like, wow, this is actually a thing. Like They're going to break all sorts of records tonight. I have no question about that. And then the coverage that follows it and the... Uh, the amount of eyes that will just be put on everything else around our kind of industry is going to be so massive after tonight. At least that's the hope. Yeah, what here's the picture about? I found. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. What do you think about like they they've sold uh, fifty? They sold out all the seats they have, which is uh, fifteen thousand plus the sky boxes. Like that's just kind of crazy number. Yeah, that it's is kind of crazy. That is. This looks so fucking awesome, dude. So badass. It's going to be great, yeah. I can't wait. All right. Yep, it'll be on tonight starting at 8 p.m. uh, PST. Thank you very much for your call, dude. We appreciate it. Have a good one. Take care. All right. My ears. Yeah, man. I I had to. I Sorry, I was like trying to mute for the stream, but I think you get it no matter what. I get it no matter what, so I was just kind of like, oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, but I'm glad uh, glad he called in. Uh, I didn't know. I haven't seen that picture. Did you show that picture? I was looking for it. Yeah, I found Furiously. it. I did find it. I just showed it. Um, okay. Link it to me or something after the show. Anyways, um, um, before before we end the show, did you have you followed or looked at anything on the Oculus Rift and horror games? Yeah, yeah, I have. Did you see what Patrick Klepek was? Did you see his playthrough the other night? Of that, um, he played like six or seven games with the Oculus Rift on uh, Giant Bomb. It's like an hour and a half footage. Fuck that. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait. It, I was scared as shit just watching, and they weren't even like good games. They were just it. It's too much, man. The, the first thing he showed is like this. He's in like this office room, and the spider walks out, or like starts crawling on the the and, monitor. And these were riff specific games. These were riff specific right? games, I believe. Yeah, and it walks up on his arm, and he's like. Oh my God! I want to take these off and make sure there's not a spider on my arm right now. And the way that the audio was engineered was, it felt like he was crawling around Patrick's head and shit like that. It it, it is wild. I cannot. He he said it, it like he he has a, a couple of moments where like horror games are at their best, and he he has been like genuinely scared. Like, oh my uh, God, like, that sounds like right up my alley. Like the water moment, of course, and like amnesia, like being one of them is, was fucking scary beyond all belief when you're like, when the monster's in the water. I don't know. I don't know. Person. I haven't played it yet. What, I you never played, played the original I haven't amnesia? played the original yet. No. Oh my God. Holy yeah. shit. You got to yeah. play the original. I'm playing amnesia. that one soon. I was going to play machine for pigs first. So, Oh, okay. Well, I won't spoil any more of that moment. Yeah. But... The st- like one of the games is just him walking around in this um, like old school. You ever play like the best example I have is Legend of Grimrock, like where it's, it's yeah, yeah. I this is the one I've seen where it just yeah. looks like a it looks like an old like old stone dungeon. catacombs or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's just walking around in that, and like this uh, ghostly creature starts screaming at him. And like her eyes start bleeding and walks towards him, and he takes off his mask. He's like, "I'm done. I can't do this anymore." <laughs> he God, was, he's already, I'm gonna get. I can't wait. The moment that he was, shit says 1080p, I am all over. He it. was genuinely scared throughout the entire. It is fascinating to watch. 
because this is a guy that like loves the horror genre. He he will scare the shit out of himself no matter what, and he does just that in this video. I couldn't watch parts of it because it was too fucked up, and I, I was I didn't even have the rift on, so I can't even imagine what it's like for him. God, I can't. Got to be crazy. Dude. I really can't wait, JP. Yeah. All right, let's wrap. Let's wrap. It's been a good two hours. Uh, thank you guys again for tuning into Eight Bits One Point One, our eleventh episode. JP, what you got for us in final thoughts today? Uh, final thoughts. Let's see. I might stream myself. Uh, taking. I might build a computer today, so maybe I'll stream that. We'll see. Um, I will be putting it in this card probably pretty quickly after the show ends. Uh, what else? On October 9th, we, you can speak to this. I have the dumbest piece of merchandise coming out on Xbox Live. I'm really excited about that. Yeah, it's gonna be stupid. Yeah, I'll 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 keep my comments to myself for for a minute, but you'll You've hear seen them. It. You'll hear You've them. Seen it. Oh, I've seen them, JP. <laughs> it's pretty stupid. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, Sunday, we've got the new uh, premiere of another role play show. It's called Ro Role Play Evan. I'll be uh, DMing that, and I'm pretty much good to go. I gotta do a couple things tomorrow uh, to get that all set in stone. Uh, what else? I think, I think that's it. Watch Worlds tonight. Going to be a lot of fun just to see how that... If you have any stake or idea of where esports can go, like this is the biggest stage I think it's ever been on in North America. So yep. you can watch it on you, you can watch on Twitch, YouTube, Azubu, a billion different places just to Twitch. watch it. Just Twitch. Just Twitch, though. Just Twitch. <laughs> From the Twitch employee. Um, Mark, has, how many, Mark, how many people do you think is going to watch that? Um, you know, we were kind of speculating on, on Wednesday. Uh, we, we threw out the number 3 million. 3 million live concurrent, you yep. think? Yep. Across everything? Yeah, 3 million. You think, is that, is that a, is that low? Like a lowball answer? Is that like a I think that's a safe answer. answer. That's a safe answer. Yeah, wow. I really do. I believe it. Wow. I guess we'll see, man. That's kind we of crazy. We will. We will. Um, we will see. The last thing, someone just tweeted this to me, and I was checking it out uh, during the break. Um, his Twitter name is twitter.com slash Fabio. Yeah. He has made, and I don't even know how to thank this guy. I don't even know. Is crazy to me. He has made a JP condensed Android app, which has all of my YouTube, all of my Twitter, all of my Reddit on it, and it's free. Uh, apparently, he has one for Total Biscuit as well, and well uh, for Evil Geniuses. So, if you have Android nice. and you follow the content that I do, I I guess go check this out. Uh, I don't have an Android or anything. He's got some <laughs> screenshots of it, but. Fucking wild, man. The community continues to surprise me day in, day out with this type of shit. The community so, is awesome. JP are. Condensed on Google Play Store. Go check it out. Word. I don't have that much to say other than this weekend I'll be gaming. I'm not sure how much gaming I'll be doing tonight because I have a birthday party I'm going to get to and there's World, so I might be taking uh, Friday off. Uh, but this weekend, I'm going to play Volgar. I'm going to open like a gazillion Hearthstone packs. I want to show you guys Soul Forge. I got Dungeons of of uh, that, that uh, Dungeons Dread of War? Elements. No, Dungeons of Dread Elements. War. Is that a game? Um, Dungeons of Dread War. <laughs> Infinity Wars, maybe. You got a uh, lot of games to play. We. I'm excited, man. I'm what gonna about get Battlefield down into Four? It. Battlefield Four. I've been playing. Uh, yeah. Fuck, man. I, there's seven games I want to play this week. Let me know. And I got to film me, Pokemon stuff with Mini. Send me a tweet when you play Battlefield Four. We'll we'll play some. All right. We'll I'll be, be your squad. spiritual guide. All right, I like it. Battle I'm in. Four. I'm so in. I'm so okay. in. Guys, we uh, really appreciate you tuning in and uh, listening to us yap and joining in on the discussion every week on Friday here for 8-Bits. Uh, we will see you again for another episode very, very soon. You can follow us both on Twitter, at DJ Wheat and at uh, ItMeJP. Also on YouTube, youtube.com slash DJ Wheat and slash ItMeJP. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you uh, next time for another episode of 8-Bits. We're out of here. Peace.